Okay, all praises to the Most High God, all praises to the Most High. So, uh, sisters, today is your day. All praise to the Lord. All right. Um, let me up the volume a little bit. Okay, so tonight's topic is called the mindset of a high value woman. The mindset of a high value woman. The mindset of a high value sister. Okay, we're going to open up. So there's three things I'm going to deal with, okay? Um, we're going to deal with the characteristics of the mindset of a high value sister, okay? Um, so the first characteristics of a high value sister, the mindset of a high value sister is that she's got skills, okay? This sister got skills. So we're going to deal with that, okay? We are going to deal with that thing. Watch this. Give me the book of Toby 2, verse 11. Toby 2, verse 11. Okay. You see, have a high value, the mindset of a high value sister, this sister right here, she got skills. Okay. Watch this. Give me the book of Toby, chapter 2, verse 11. Toby, chapter 2, verse 11. Come on. For well, the grace of God that bringeth salvation has no, no, appeared no, no. to. Not Titus, Toby. Oh. Tobit, come on, stay with me. Tobit 2, verse 11. Okay. Apologies. All praises. Tobit 2, verse 11. Let's get that. Tobit chapter 2, verse 11. Read. And my wife Anna did take women's works to do. What did she do? Did take women's works to do. You see that thing? She took women's works to do. That means this sister right here, I'm going to deal with that next uh, characteristic. But you see what she's, you see what it says? Right? It says, my wife and I did take women's works to do. My wife, not my girlfriend, my wife. Watch this. Give me the book of Genesis 2. Okay. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Watch this. The book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Come on. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother mm -hmm. and shall cleave unto his wife. His what? His wife. His wife. His wife. Come on. And shall cleave unto his wife and mm -hmm. they shall be one flesh. And they shall be one flesh. Amen to that thing. So now a man leaving his father and his mother, it means what? He's got a what? A, he's got a job. He's got a nest. He's got a roof over his head. Okay. So that he, he and his wife can be able to dwell together. That's how they cleave, you understand? To be one flesh. They must be joined together under the covenant of marriage. Read that again, verse 24. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Read. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and mm -hmm. shall cleave unto his wife and Read. they shall be one flesh. You shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. So now that this is a married couple right here. You understand? The couple, the men and women, they are married. Okay, the brother has a, has a job. Guess what? The sister also got skills to help her husband. You understand? She's just, she's not a ball and chain. She's not just a ball. She's not a ball and chain. Mm -mm. This sister right here, she's going to help her husband. Like our foremother did at four times. You see that thing? Watch this. Give me Sarah 25 verse 1. Okay. And this is, these are things that um, you have to be able to what? To, to, in, to understand that the, you sisters, these are the skills that you must have. You must have a skill, okay? Yes, we encourage sisters, you must study and all that, okay? But if, you know, some, some people reading and not be reading books and it's not their thing, but they've got skills, they learn with their hands. You see that thing? The most High God has given them skills in that thing. Read, watch this. Give me, um, give me Sarah 25 and one. Watch this. Ecclesiastes 25 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Ecclesiastes 25 verse 1. Come on. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God and men. Come on. The unity of brethren, mm -hmm. the love of neighbors, Read. a man and a wife that agree together. A man and a wife that agree together. So you see that part right there? A man and a wife that agree together. Those are some of the things that beautify the most High God. So when a man and a woman come together, you understand the brother has a job. Uh, the sister has skills. She can help her household. She can, she'll be able to, uh, to assist in the house. 
she's not going to be a pillar of rest. She's not going to be, she's not going to be a pillar of stress. Excuse me. She's going to be a pillar of rest, not a pillar of stress. You understand? And guess what? She's coming with skills. She's going to be able to help her husband. You understand? Because a lot of the times where you see couples be fighting all the time, the sister don't got skills. The sister don't want to get skills. So a lot of the times she's sitting idle and she don't, she don't want to do nothing. You understand? She'll always be complaining about whatever it is, whatever, whatever, whatever. There's everything that's coming out of her mouth. She's always complaining about something. You understand? Why? Because the sister doesn't have skills. She doesn't have things to occupy her mind with. You understand? Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Sirach, chapter 1, verse 19. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 1, verse 19. Okay. Sirach 1, verse 19. Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 19. Read. Wisdom reigneth down skill and knowledge of understanding. What did the Bible say? Wisdom reigneth down skill and knowledge of understanding. So the wisdom of the most high God is going to give you skills. You're going to be skilled. You understand? It's going to give you the sense to get some skills to help your house, to help your husband. If you're not married, guess what you should do? You should learn some skills. Learn how to sew, learn how to cook, learn how to bake. Okay, so on and so forth. You must understand these things. Understand property. What is the, how does property business work? Understand these things. You understand? You must do some research, research, find out what's going on in the world, so on and so forth. These are things that about what? The things that will benefit the 12 tribes of Israel. The things that will benefit your husband, your nation. Okay? Read that again. Verse 19. Ecclesiastes 1 verse 19. Read. Wisdom bringeth down skill and knowledge of understanding. Mm -hmm. And exalted them to honor that hold her fast. Because if you hold wisdom to honor, guess what? The Lord will exalt you. The Lord will give you skills, which is the, a, 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 um, a high-value woman. The mindset of a high-value woman, she what? She understands that she needs to have skills. She got to have skills. Because in case the husband loses a job, they got retrenched and all that, she'll be able to say, you know what, babe? I got you. I know how to do X, Y, and Z. Okay. Oh, by the way, all that money you've been giving me, guess what is guess what I've been doing? I've been saving it up. This sister got skills. You understand? She's using her brain. You see that thing? Watch this. Because the only way that she was able to get these skills, you understand? Because it says wisdom reigneth down skills. Watch this. Give me the book of Sirach 126. This is how the sister is able to have skills. She has the sense, she has enough sense to say, you know what? I'm not going to be, I'm not going to treat my Lord as a, as like, like I do Sasa. You ever see our sisters that go to the, that go to Sasa to get paid because of the, 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 the children and all that. They, many of them, they don't want to work. Many of them, they just wait for month end because they've got four children, four kids. They, they're going to get paid for all of them. And they don't even take that money to use it for the children. It doesn't benefit the children at all. It benefits them. That sister doesn't have sense, okay? Because she doesn't have skills. Read what you got. Sirach 126. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 26. Come on. If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall give her unto thee. You see that thing? If thou desire wisdom, if wisdom is what you desire, if wisdom is the apple of your eye, Guess what? It says, keep the commandments and the Lord shall give it unto thee. So when the Lord gives you that wisdom, wisdom is going to give you enough sense to get skills. So you know what? I need to have some skills. Anything can happen. I need to have skills so I can be able to do what? To support myself, to support my household, to support my children and so forth. That's the mindset of a, of a, that's, that's the mindset of a high value woman. A high value woman thinks like that. Because this thing, yes, we dealt with the virtuous woman, the characteristics of a virtuous woman. Now we're dealing with the mindset of that sister right there. That sister's got skills. You understand? If she doesn't have skills, guess what she does? She acquires skills. That's why I tell you, sisters, learn how to sew, learn how to bake, learn how to cook. Okay? Because what's going to happen is that you brothers, when you get married, before, when you prove in the sister, make sure the sister can cook. 
Because if you don't, then you get married. Guess what? The honeymoon period will be done. You understand? And now it's time for you are tired of uh, your fast food, fast foods and all that. Now it's time for the sister to cook something and you discover she don't know how to cook. Okay? But there's a program that is being implemented. Okay, I'm working on something for the sisters, you know, to get their cooking skills, you know, on point. Read what you got. Read that again. Verse 26. Ecclesiastes 1 verse 26. Read. Thou desire wisdom. Keep mm -hmm. the commandments. Do and what? the Lord shall keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. If you desire wisdom, keep the commandments. So now go back to Tobit 2 verse 11. Tobit chapter 2 verse 11. It's very important that you sisters, you must have skills. Okay? You cannot just live your life with you don't have any skills. You understand? Look at what's going on today. You know, people are losing jobs and all that. Get a skill. Okay? That you can be able to what? To still be able to support yourself if you're not married. If you are married, you'll be able to support yourself. Meaning what? You're going to support your house. You're going to help your husband and so forth. Go back to Toby 2 verse 11. Read that again. Toby chapter 2 verse 11. Read. And my wife Anna did take women's works to do. She took women's works to do. Meaning this, this sister right there, oh, this foremother, she had skills. That's why when our foremother, our forefather Toby was blind, she said, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna deal with stuff now. He was blind for eight years and she was able to hold things down, to hold him down. You, know, you see that thing? So that's, that's the mindset of a high value woman. She thinks like that, okay? She doesn't think welfare. She doesn't think that all the time. Like our sister's been doing that, go to Sasa every month. Watch this. Give me Exodus 12 verse 34. We're going to give some examples. You understand? Exodus 12. When we came out of Egypt, just look at our foremothers now. Watch this. Exodus chapter 12, okay, and verse 34. Watch this. The book of Exodus 12 verse 34. Come on. And the people took their dough before it was leavened. And the what? And the people took their dough before it was leavened. The people took their dough before it was leavened. There's always been a custom in Israel. The sisters are the one that deals with the kitchen and all that. So what you are seeing here is that the people took their dough before it was leavened because the sisters mainly, they are the ones that handle the kitchen. Watch this. Go ahead. And the people took their dough before it was leavened. Really? Their kneading troughs mm -hmm. being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. You see that thing upon their shoulders. But what you want to see there, it says, and the people took their dough before it was leavened. Their kneading troughs. So guess what? In order for you to knead dough, you need skills to do that. You need to learn. You need to practice. You need to apply yourself so you can start to develop. A, it, 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 it ends up being, it turns into a science. You start to understand the techniques on how to mix the dough for something glorious to come out. Okay, not death in the pot. Watch this. Give me Proverbs 31 verse 15. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 15. So our foremothers, they were bad in the kitchen. They knew how to deal with the kitchen stuff. The food, they were, they, they were bad in the kitchen. They could cook. You understand? So you sisters, you cannot be a sister who don't know how to cook. That's not going to happen in Israel. You understand? You must learn how to cook. Okay, some of you, you, you know, you have your aunts in the world. You know, your aunt used to cook. Your aunt or your, your, your cousin, she knows how to cook something beautiful. You go, why don't you go to her and ask her how you cook this? Because some of you think you can't actually go to your, your cousin. Who you know, that cousin right there, she knows how to cook. You can go to her and ask her, hey, cuz, how do you make this type of thing? How do you make it, this thing? Show me. What is the temperature? What do you mix? But some of you don't want to do that. Okay? Proverbs 31, verse 15. Watch this. Proverbs 31, verse 15. Come on. She riseth also while it is yet night. Mm -hmm. Giveth meat to her household. And, do and what? Push, and giveth meat to her household. And giveth meat to her household. Meaning this sister, she knows how to cook. You understand? She knows how to throw down in the kitchen. She got some skills. Okay, come on. And giveth meat to her household and mm -hmm. a portion to her maidens. 
because our foremothers back there had maids, okay? They had servants and all that, okay? Watch this. Jump down. Give me Luke 10, 38. Luke 10, 38. This sister right here, it says she gave what? She giveth me to her household. She knew how to cook. She had skills. Because the same skills that you can apply in your house, guess what? When things go bad, guess what you can do? You can actually cook food and go to a corner and set up a small table and sell food. You see our sisters that are coming from Ghana, you understand, Gabon, those places. When they arrive here, you see a sister be sitting a car. See, you know, you, every day you pass it, she's always asking for money. But the sister come from the Congo. She arrives here, guess what she does? Within a week, she already set up something in the corner. She's selling, she's selling, uh, um, she's selling biscuits and, 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 and bread and whatnot, whatever have you. But guess what? You know what the problem is? Pride. You know, South African women, very, very prideful. The problem is those that are coming from the Congo, when they arrive here, they adopt the mindset of a South African black ashy woman. That's what happens. Okay? Give me that thing. Give me that in uh, Luke 10, 38. Watch this. Our foremothers, they had skills in the kitchen. So that's a requirement, brothers. A sister must know how to cook. You must test the sister when you're proving it. You understand? Ask her to cook something. To ask her to cook something for you and see if she's good with the kitchen. She knows how to cook. Okay? And guess what? When you are chaperoned, when you are proving, and you need to know, because some sisters can buy something. You know, I'll tell you something. In the, I'll tell you a story. Mm. This is long, long, long time ago. Okay? So, this sister, sister I used to know in the world, this sister, this one day, right? This sister, she comes to visit. <laughs> Guess what the sister does? You're not going to believe me. The sister passes by um, spa and all that. She be buying the food that is already cooked. You know, those ones that they dish out and all that. And when she got home, because I was late for, for, some, for some odd reason, you know what she did? She took that food, put it in the pot, and she cooked it. And she took the stuff, the containers, she hid them in the bin. You see that thing? <laughs> so what I'm about, I was throwing something. I'm like, what the hell is this? I'm checking and I ask her, wait a minute, did you cook this stuff? Uh, mm, mm. I'm like, you see that thing? Red flags right there. Read that part again. Uh, Luke 10, 38. Some sisters Luke. will do that, brothers. My point in what I'm saying is make sure that when you are, you are, you are going to be chaperoned, of course. But here's the thing. When you go to her, to, to her house, to so that she make sure that you are there, you can see that she's cooking. That's what you got to do to see if she knows how to cook. Or she didn't just go buy food and put it in the pot and heat it up and say, here. Okay, Luke 10, 38. Watch this. Luke chapter 10, verse 38. Come on. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. So the him here is Christ. So Martha received Christ into her house. Go ahead. And she had a sister called Mary, mm -hmm. which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. She did what? And heard his word. No, no, she, she did what? No, she we said, which also did what? Which also sat at Jesus' feet mm -hmm. and heard his word. He says, she sat at Jesus Christ's feet and heard his word. Because guess what? There was women disciples. It wasn't just the men. There was men disciples, which were the main ones, but there was women disciples as well. So she was a disciple. She sat at Jesus' feet. Okay, give me, the, I'm going to show you what that means. Give me the book of Acts. Okay, this is the Apostle Paul. Um, this is the Apostle Paul's testimony right here. Watch this. Okay, give me um, Acts 22. Acts chapter 22, start at verse 1. Acts 22 and verse 1. Watch this. Acts chapter 22, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Men, brethren, and fathers, hear ye my defense, which I make now unto you. It says, men. Men, brethren, and fathers, hear ye my defense, which I make now unto you. Come on, put some power in this thing. Go ahead. Acts chapter 2, chapter 22, verse, verse 1. Great. Men, brethren, and fathers, hear ye my defense, 
which I make now unto you. Come on. And when they heard that he speak in the Hebrew tongue to them, mm -hmm. they kept the more silence. And Come he on. said, You see that thing? He said, They kept the more silence. Because guess what? You know, when people get mad, they start to speak in their quote unquote <laughs> mother tongue. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I am verily a man which am a Jew. Come on. Born in Tarsus, a city mm -hmm. in Cilicia. Really? Brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel. Gamaliel. So Gamaliel was to Paul. He's, he, he was the one that taught the apostle Paul. You understand? The law. He's the one that taught the apostle Paul. The list says, at the feet of Gamaliel. Go ahead. He had brought up in the city at the feet of Gamaliel really? and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers mm -hmm. and was zealous toward God as ye all are this day. So now he says, the part I wanted of that is that yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel. So that's the same thing we read in the book of uh, Luke 10. Okay, Luke chapter 10 and verse 39 with Mary who sat at Jesus' feet, meaning she was learning. Okay, go back to Luke 10, verse 39. Luke chapter 10, verse 39. Read. And she had a sister called Mary, which mm -hmm. also sat at Jesus' feet and mm -hmm. heard his word. She learned, meaning she was learning. She was a disciple. Come on. But Martha was cumbered about much serving. About what? And was cumbered about much serving. So Martha was occupied with saving the food. So her job was to serve. So guess what she was doing? She was bad and she knew how to throw down in the kitchen. You understand? She knew how to throw down in the kitchen. So while Mary was, 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 was learning the scriptures and all that, guess what this sister was doing? This sister was dealing with the kitchen stuff. She knew how to cook and she was serving the people. Go ahead. And, and came to him and said, Lord, does not thou care? And came to him and said, Lord, does thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Mm -hmm. Bid her therefore that she help me. You see what she's saying? He says, could you tell my sister to come and help me with this? So Christ said, listen, deal with it. Deal with it. Okay. You must, uh, Martha, you must handle your thing. You understand? Mary has chosen something different. That's your office. You handle it. You handle that office. So the point is, she was what? She was bad in the kitchen. She was good in the kitchen. She was, because a lot of the times is some sisters will come in and some sisters, you know, they, they are already here. Some sisters will be thinking, you know what? Why do we got to serve the men like this? Why do we have, listen, sister, that's your job. That's your office. Because that's the kitchen. You need to know that department inside out. That's your department. You must, you must love it. You must own it. You must, listen, do it with joy. So that when you cook, there's no death in the pot. Because I tell you, if you cook, but you don't like doing it, the people, guess what? It's not going to be nice. You know, you kill the people. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs 31 verse 14. Proverbs 31 verse 14. So sisters, you, you make sure that you master your office, okay? You must master that office. Sister, that don't know how to cook, I won't, I won't even listen to nothing you say, okay? Because when you get married, what's going to happen? And before you get married, what me, you need to know how to cook so we can say, that sister right there, that's a good sister. She knows how to cook. You understand? She got skills, so on, and she's industrious, so on and so forth. That is what the Lord is looking for. Guess what? That's what your Lord is looking for. We'll be looking for as well. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 14. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 14. Read. She is like the merchant ships. Mm -hmm. She bringeth her food from afar. You see that thing? She bringeth her food from afar. This sister right here, she knows where to get the best food. Because she knows. You see, because think about it. If you... If, the kitchen is your department. You need to know anything and everything about that department. Meaning what? You must know where to get the best food. You understand? You must know um, where to get the best food first and foremost. 
okay you must know how much things cost you understand you must know the price general price of things that you're going to purchase you know you must know the value of the things that you buy as a as as a, as a high value woman you must know these things guess what because this the things that your 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 lord is going to eat the things your children going to eat the things that you're going to cook for the congregation it must be top notch things you understand you can't just be going to the street corner you see like the tomatoes are rotten you just be taking no so for that to have, for you to acquire that skill guess what you got to do you have to go out and actually be doing that stuff is not going to fall on your lap you must apply that and by so doing guess what you're going to know how to do you're going to know how to budget okay you're going to know how to budget grocery for grocery you're going to know how much you're going to buy for the, you're going to buy the groceries you're going to buy another thing that is going to teach you is going to teach you how to do not to bleed money so whatever sense you you have left guess where they go you save them why because you are preparing for the rainy day that's how you got to think you must have skills to be able to do what to help your household and your nation read that again verse 14 proverbs 31 verse 14 come on she is like the merchant ships mm -hmm. she bringeth her food from afar you see that she a merchant because a merchant deals with trade you understand trade of what goods and services so the sisters knows where to get the best goods she knows where to get the best services in for the in order what to benefit her people she knows that to benefit to benefit her lord to benefit her children she knows where to find those things you understand watch this um give me the book of prop give me jump up to verse 13 read verse 13 proverbs 31 verse 13 read verse 13 for me verse 13 mm -hmm. she seeketh wool and she does what and worketh willingly she seeketh wool mm -hmm. and flax Come on. and worketh willingly with her hands. So the key word out of that verse, it says, seek. She seeketh wool. That means she needs to know, she would have to what? In order for her to find out where to get the best uh, sewing materials, for instance. You understand? We dealt with the food department. That's a skill. You must have that skill. Another skill is you make clothes. You learn how to sew. You understand? Because you have, when you look around you, sisters, look at our, what our sisters wear in the world. I mean, talk about in the world. Look at the, the type of dresses our sisters wear. When you go to the shops, look at the stuff that they sell for the sisters. Not just for the older sisters, not for the younger sisters, but also for the children. Everything is see-through. So that's where you come in. You say, you know what? What the hell is this? You look at that stuff, you say, mm -mm, I'm not going to allow my nation to dress like whores. I don't want our sisters to dress like this. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to come up with a plan. I got a plan. I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. I'm going to go and look for where to get the best material, you understand, and the cost effective material that I can afford to start to do or to learn a skill on how to sew because I've identified a problem in my community, in my nation. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to help my nation. That's the mindset you must have. Okay, read that again, verse 13. Proverbs 31, verse 13. Read. She speaketh wool and flags mm -hmm. Read. and worketh willingly with her hands. You see that thing? She worketh willingly. She takes initiative. You understand? She worketh willingly with her hands. She seeketh wool, meaning she does research. This is does, she does research. You understand? Because to seek means to today, how do you seek? You go to Google to seek stuff. You understand? And once you get the, the, you watch the videos on where to find the stuff, the articles, where to find the best, whatever material that you need, guess where you go? Now you start to see where these things are sold. You go there. You know where the, the flea markets are. You know, like uh, on Sunday, that's the best time when there's, there's multiple flea markets. Sisters, if you ask them, do you know any flea markets where they sell different things, clothes and material? Them sisters don't know. Why? Because your mindset that's what we are dealing with this day. Okay, jump down to verse 19. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 19. Come on. She layeth her hands to the spindle. She does what? And her hands, she layeth her hands to the spindle. She layeth her hands to the spindle. Go ahead. And her hands hold the die staff. 
the distaff. We went over this a couple of days ago, I believe. Okay, it says she layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. I Meaning because our foremothers, guess what they did? Hmm. I'm going to deal with that a, bit, a little bit later. But jump up to verse 16. Jump up to verse 16. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. She considereth the field. She does what? She considereth a field. She considereth a field, meaning land. She and she what? You know what? I need to buy property. She thinks about things like this. She's industrious. Go ahead. She considereth a field and mm -hmm. buyeth it. Where do you think she's going to get the money to do that? Because the sister got skills. You understand? She's using her skill to save up money to buy land, to buy property. Go ahead. When the, with the fruit of her hands, she planted a vineyard. You see that part right there? It says, with the fruit of her hands, jump down to verse 31. Watch this. With the fruit of her hands. Verse 31. Mm -hmm. Give her of the fruit of her hands. Do what? And give her of the fruit of her hands. The fruit of her hand is the good works that she does because the sister decided, you know what? In order for me to have good fruits, good works, I must learn a skill. I must have skills in something so that my skill will be able to bear fruit so I can benefit my people. You see that part right there? Read that again. Proverbs 31 verse 31. Mm -hmm. Give her of the fruits of her hands. Bread. And let her own works. And let her own works praise her in the gates. Because in the gates, that's where you find the leaders of Israel. So the leaders of Israel, they were fully aware of which sisters are putting in the work. So it says, give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works. Her own works. Meaning this sister, she's not riding on her Lord's reputation or she's not riding on her Lord's position in the congregation. No. She's not saying, oh no, that's a soldier, that's a bishop, that's a captain, I'm just going to hide behind my husband's position. No. This sister has, has, she's got her own works to praise her. She's got her own. You know what she's doing? She's putting in work. She's putting in and when, by so doing, guess what she's doing? She's honoring her, uh, her husband. She's honoring her husband. You see that thing? She's applying that which she's learning. So guess what that is? She's honoring the man of the most high God and glorifying the father which is in heaven. So what you are seeing is says, give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Meaning what? The men of Israel are going to know when you want sisters, when you want work done in the sister's side, on the sister's, you know which, which sister to call and she will get it done. You're not going to have to go back and forth with her. She knows. She takes it to the instruction. She applies it. You don't have to be following her around. That's what this is going into. Jump back up to verse 16. Okay? Proverbs 31 verse 16. Read. Really? She considereth a field and buyeth it. She does what? She considereth a field and buyeth it. Watch this. Go ahead. With the fruits of her hands, mm -hmm. she planted a vineyard. With the fruit of her hands, meaning mean what? She, this sister got skills and she's going to put in work behind the skills she's got. That's what the sister will do. So now it says she planted a vineyard. Guess what? Watch this. Watch this. Jump. Go back to verse 19. Read verse 19 now. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. She layeth her hands to the spindle. Go ahead. And her hands hold the distaff. So now he says she lays her hands to the spindle and her hands take hold, uh, take, uh, he says what? And her hands hold the distaff. What I want to show you here, brothers, you sisters particularly, okay, is that she considered the field and she what? She buyeth it and she what? It says with the fruit of her hands, she planted that vineyard, meaning she's going to work that land. She's not going to get somebody else to do it. She will do it herself. Why? Because the sister is not lazy. But here's the thing. Because today we don't own land. We don't have none of that stuff. You understand? As a nation. So now, guess what? You know, you, you will go to the places where you can find the best material to make these clothes. Okay? Because back then, they would buy land. They would plant cotton. You understand? Cotton plant. So what they will do, the cotton will grow. Guess they will pick the cotton and they will create. They will create what? They will create wool so that they can be able to sew the clothes. 
They create material so they can be able to sew the clothes. That's the mindset. So today we don't have that. You can't say, no, but I don't have a field. I don't have land. Yeah, if you don't have it, go to Oriental Plaza. There's a lot of material that are sold. That's not the only place. There's multiple places that you can seek and find and be able to compare prices and say, you know what? Um, we've been buying from such and such place. You know what? There's another place actually. It's quite reasonable. And the material is just as quality. The, the, the mindset of a, of a high value woman thinks like that. You understand? This woman, right, she's not, she's not going to sit on her hands and just be that pretty face. Watch this. Jump down to verse 21 now. Proverbs 31 verse 21. Proverbs 31 verse 21. Come on. She is not afraid of the snow for her household. Mm -hmm. For all her household are clothed with scarlet. You see, he says she's not afraid of the snow for a household. So there's snow. Because remember, um, in places where, you know, there is, there's always snow, guess what? At night, it's, it's, it becomes a lot more extensive. So in the morning when you wake up, there's no, the snow will have covered the whole yard, would have covered the, the, the roots that you, you take and all that. Guess what happens? When you say she's not afraid of the snow, guess what you will do? She wakes up early in the morning, jump back up to verse 15, so we can prove that. Verse 15. Watch this. Verse 15. Read. She rises also while it is yet night. You see that part right there? While it is yet night. She's an early bird. She will catch the first worm. You see that thing? Go back to verse 21. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. She's not afraid of the snow for her household. Read. For all her household are clothed with scarlet. So now when she wakes up early in the morning before everybody else wakes up, she will move the snow out of the way. Because why? She's got work to do. This woman got skills and she will, she will take her skills to do what? To bear, she will make sure that her skills bear fruit. That's the mindset. That's the mindset she got. You see what I'm saying? That is the mindset that she's got. Jump down. Keep reading. Read verse 22. Verse 22. Mm -hmm. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. She maketh herself, herself. She's doing it herself. So in order for her to do that, first she, she considered her field, a land, property. She buys one, a place of business where she's going to operate. Because guess what? She's thinking, you know what? Let me get property. In that property, I'm going to what? I'm, 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 I've got skills. I can sew. I can make clothes. I can make garments. Guess what? I can come up with new garments, new fashion. You understand? I can design. Guess what? Before you know it, she's got a clothing business. She's got a clothing company, so on and so forth. That's the mindset. It starts with a small, it starts with a machine. That's what it does. It all starts with a machine. That's it. You understand? It all starts with that machine. And with the spirit of the most side behind you, guess what? You're unstoppable. But the thing is, the sisters, we're going to deal with the reason why these things don't get done. Watch this. Uh, read that again, verse 22. Proverbs 31, verse 22. Great. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Mm -hmm. Her clothing is silk and purple. You see, she knows different type of materials for different type of clothes because the, she knows that every season comes with the specific clothing. That's why in the congregation, we're talking to Sister Tavo, listen, we need clothes for different seasons and so forth. Well, that's not biblical. You understand? These All these different materials... They are what? They are compatible with different types of seasons and things like that. So that's why I say she, um, verse 22, she maketh herself coverings of tapestry. She does this herself. You understand? Her clothing is silk and purple. This is good quality materials. Okay, come on. Verse 22. You know no, verse 24. Read verse 24 now. Verse 24. She maketh mm -hmm. fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Unto the what? Unto the merchant. So not only is she manufacturing, she is also doing distribution. You see that thing? She maketh fine linen and selleth it. This woman, she's business minded. This woman, she's industrious. You understand? This woman got skills. She's not a dummy. She's not a simpleton. She's not a simp. 
meaning she's not a bum. Okay, read that again. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 24. Great. She maketh fine linen and selleth it, mm -hmm. and delivereth girdles unto the merchants. You see that thing? She maketh fine linen and selleth it, and delivereth, delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Remember, like she's like a merchant ship. She knows, she knows where to get what. Because in order for her to be able to know where to get what, that means when she opens her tongue, read verse 26 now. This is why she's able to get the best stuff that she wants for, for what? For her business and all that, for her household, for her nation, for her Lord above all, more importantly. You see what I'm saying? So watch this. This is, this is what's running the show. Verse 26, watch this. Come on, Proverbs 31, 26. Verse 26. Mm -hmm. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. Read. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. You see that thing right there? She openeth her mouth with, with wisdom. This sister is, she's, she, this, was, this, this is not a dumb sister. She's not a light woman. You understand? She, she openeth her mouth with wisdom. Meaning when she knows how to filter her words. Okay, that's what I'll be telling you, sisters. Clean your speech. In in her tongue is the law of kindness. You know, there was a there's a sister. Um, oh, praise to the most high. She converted before she passed on, before the Lord called her back home. This sister, she used to sell, she was one of the street vendors. She used to sell here in Galfontaine. And that sister, one thing about that sister, she was very kind, that sister. Okay, she knew how to talk to people. She knew she was very kind. It doesn't matter how old you was. The sister was very kind to everyone. She would speak nicely to you. You understand? Customer service was impeccable. Excellent. And whenever she came to sell, like during the school holidays and all, you know what she did? She's from, she's from Mozambique. You understand? That's Israel over there. She's from Mozambique. You know what she was doing? She brought her children. She brought her, she would, brought, she would bring her daughters. And her daughters, when she went to buy stock, you know what her daughters would be doing? Her daughters would be packing stock where she's selling and her daughters would be running the business while she's gone to get the stock. And there was young. The daughters was what? One was 10. Another one was, I think, 12. 10 and 12. You understand? And they would stand there that they'd be selling. She'd be gone for maybe two, three hours going to get stock. They'll be selling. By the time she comes back, they've already what? They've already traded already. You see that thing? So what she was doing, she was, uh, to a point, there was another, she, she had three daughters. Another one was about 20, I think 21 around there. Next to her, next to her, she also had set up her own business. She was dealing with fruits and veggies, mainly, but mostly fruits and then veggies a little bit. And her mother was dealing with everything else, beans and all of that stuff, tomato, all of that. She dealt with that stuff. But her daughter, the one 21 year old, she was dealing with fruits and veg. My point is, that's the mind. You see, our sister, even in the world, they don't know the scripts, but that thing right there, the skill, industrious. Okay, give me that in Luke. I believe it's in Luke chapter 16. Mm, give me one sec. Uh, I believe it's Luke 16. Let me look at it. Uh, yes, Luke 16, verse 8. Read that. Let me highlight this thing. Luke 16, verse 8. Read that. Luke chapter 16, verse 8. Come on. And the Lord commended the unjust steward. Mm -hmm. because he had done wisely Come for on. the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light you see what Christ said that's, the, that, that's what Christ observed he says hold on the unjust stewards because he had done wisely meaning what they, 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 had, they had wisdom you understand they, they, they had sense without the scriptures they had common sense to know you know what 
I, 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 I have skills. I, I, I have people skills. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to open a business. I don't have to manufacture nothing, but I must know where to get the best things that I'm going to sell. That's what that sister was doing. You understand? So now it says, um, for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Meaning what? The Israelites, those, those, our, our, those of us, you know, in the congregation and those of wherever in the world that have been woken up to the truth of who they are according to the scriptures, guess what? They are simping with the Bible. Simps. A bunch of simps with Bibles. They are still making poor decisions. You see that thing? They are still grimy. They're, listen, the children of the world wiser than the children of light. You see, Christ was cutting. Why? Because that's what, what he was observing. That's what he saw. You understand? My point is, look, that sister, she was not in the truth, but, you know, towards the end of her age, the life and all that, she was changing. You know, she was, when she started, she was starting to wear beautiful garments, long garments and covering her head and things of that nature. My point is this. Look, she's been used as an example, but she's in the world. There's another one at, at Boulders. She's from Maputo as well. She's from Maputo. That sister, right? She's an older sister. I used to see that sister, right? She she wakes up very early every day. She'll be roll, she will travel the whole of the whole of boulders selling. She sells beans. She sells um, yeah, she sells beans. She cooks the beans, she'll sell milli meal and all that, beans and milli meal. That sister, she'll run the whole of boulders, yeah, selling. Okay. And this one time I saw she was pregnant. No, you think she would stop? No. She had a huge tea, uh, tin can on top of her head. Guess what, what, guess what was in there? Mealy meal. Another time she'd be selling beans. She'd be moving around, just be selling. You understand? And she, the, the, and when she gave birth, she disappeared for a couple of somethings. And then when she came back, the child was, was old enough to be playing around. Guess what she did? While she was selling, she was no longer moving around. But what she would do is, the child will be playing there. She'll be selling next to the child. That's so she can make sure that the child doesn't move around. She doesn't go far. That's the mindset. She didn't make, she, she, there's no excuse in her mind. That's the point. Okay. Go back to Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31 verse 24. Once again. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 24. Read. She maketh fine linen and selleth it, mm -hmm. and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. You see that thing, verse 26 now, come on. Verse 26. She openeth her mouth in wisdom, mm -hmm. and in her tongue is the law of kindness. In her tongue is the law of kindness. Now I'm coming back to my original thought, because I was giving the example of that sister. That sister, she what? She had the law of, of kindness. She was kind. She knew how to talk to customer, to the customers and all of that. That's why there was always a crowd where she was selling. There was always a crowd where she was selling. You understand? And the black ashy demons around her, they hated that sister. They despised that sister. Okay? They did. Watch this. Um, read verse 25. Now, Proverbs 31 verse 25. Verse 25, strength and honor are her clothing, mm -hmm. and she shall rejoice in the time in time to come. You see that thing? It says, strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. Meaning what? Um, in the future, guess what's going to happen? The rejoicing is going to come from the, from the fruits of her hands. Because this sister, she's got her own works that she's doing in the body. You know, she's not hiding behind her Lord. And, mm -mm. She's got her own works, this sister. That's why verse 31 says, give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gate. You see that thing? The sister is using the hair skills that she's got to benefit Israel. Watch this. Let's give some examples. Give me the book of Acts. Give me first Ezra first. Give me first Ezra 4, verse 17. First Ezra chapter 4, verse 17.
Come on. First Ezra 4 verse 17. Read that. First Ezra chapter 4 verse 17. Read. These also make garments for men. They do what? These also make garments for men. That's the Proverbs 31, sister. They make garments for men. You understand? They make garments for men. In order for them to do that, they need to have a skill. They need to have, they have to have the know-how on how to sew, what type of material to buy to sew this particular type of garment. They would know that they have, they will have to learn those skills. They, they would have to acquire those skills before they can do that. So that's why I tell you, sisters, you don't know how to sew. Stop being complacent. Stop make excuses. Every week we ask your sister, where we at? Mm, nah, mm, mm, mm. No. Why? Because guess what? You sisters, you need to you need to really look at the big picture here. The problem we are, we are solving with the clothing department is what? Is that when you look at our our sisters, the from the oldest to the youngest, right? You see the older mothers, you see the sisters, you see the children. Look at the way they dress. Where do they get the clothes that they buy? They get them from our enemies. Our enemies are going to make clothes that are going to glorify our sisters. Are you kidding? Our enemies don't give a damn about our people. You understand? And they know. That's why when you go to the shops, to the malls, they have those mannequins. Why do you think they have them? To entice you. So you see yourself dressed like, dressed like that mannequin is dressed up. The mannequin is dressed up in a mini skirt because if you notice, I'm going to use boulders as an example. There's a lot of Arabs. There's a lot of Hamites. There's a lot of, there's Esau, obviously. You understand? There's a lot of Persians. So when you go into those shops, the majority of them, they sell mini skirts. They sell low cut tops. You understand? They, they say they sell, um, they sell dresses. But when you look at the dress can be long down to the foot. When you look at the side, it's opened. It shows the thigh. When you, when you pass by the sun, when there's a, there's a, there's a, you know, reflection of the sun, the thing is see-through. Why do you think they are doing that? They are doing that to do what? To keep our sisters in a horrid state of mind. So now when the sisters go to the shops, they take their children with. Guess what the children are going to wear? The children are going to wear the same garbage. So that's where you come in, you sisters. Your job is to say, we have a problem in the nation. That's the problem right there. Sisters, let's come together. Listen, we have three weeks, we have a month, we need to learn how to sew. Let's come together, we need to generate arms. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to come together, we're going to buy a proper sewing machine. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to learn. You understand? We're going we're gonna to meet every now and again to learn how to use this thing. We're going to rotate it and whatever you come up with. Because you've identified a problem and say, listen, we have a problem in the nation. Because when more sisters come in, and then, so we're still going to continue to go and buy clothes from our enemies where you can just buy material and sew it yourself. I mean, I need you these sisters to think. Okay? Read that again, verse 17. First Ezra 4, verse 17. First Ezra chapter 4, verse 17. Come on. These also make garments for men. These bring glory unto men. You see that thing? With that these, these make garments for men. These bring glory unto men. Guess what? Your job it will be to glorify your to glorify to bring glory to your nation. Right now, we we listen, look at us. Messed up. Okay, hemmed up. So now when you look at that, it says they made garments for men. Okay, because the men come first, and then they make garments for the nation. You understand? Because they saw a, a problem and said, you know what, we need to fix this. The only way for us to fix it, we must acquire some skills, sisters. We need to learn how to sew to address the problem we are seeing in the community. So guess what? When, they, when you open that clothing shop, our people, even though they are not in the truth, but when they see the garments that you make, when they see, when they see how you look when you put them on, guess what? They'll be asking, sis, where did you buy that? No, by the way, there's a shop down there. Go to shop such and such. Okay, go to that Hebrew market right there. You're going to find there's a beautiful dresses, garments for both, uh, you know, for both the older sisters, you know, the, the youth and all that, and the children. That's the mindset. Okay, that's how you have to think. Watch this. Give me the book of Acts chapter 9, verse 36.
X9 verse 36. These are four mother Dorcas, okay? Tabitha, our four mother Tabitha. Read what you got, X9 36. X of the 9 verse 36. Come on. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha. You see that thing? She was a disciple. She was a disciple. So the disciples wasn't just the men. No, the disciple just means student. She was a disciple. Okay, read that again. Acts chapter 9, verse 36. Mm -hmm. now, there was a, now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. Read. This woman was full of good works. She was what? Alms. This woman was full of good works. She was full, full, full of good works. This woman wasn't worthless. She was what? She was worthy. Okay? She was full of good works. That's why you sisters, you think, okay, I must just bake. Mm -hmm. You don't understand the importance of that. That's a beautiful office right there. You understand? That's a beautiful office. Because guess what? You get to you get to be a benefit to your nation. When 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 brothers are uh, when brothers and sisters they they want they 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 want bread, guess what? They can come to you. You know that every week you have to bake X amount of stuff because you know you are delivering to that family, the house of um the house of soldier hair guy. You're delivering to the house of soldier Jonah, so on and so forth. The house of Brother Bezalel. You know you are delivering such a... Listen, because you, you need to think about that stuff. We are, we are a nation. And a nation, in the nation, guess what's in the nation? Give me that in Matthew chapter 5 real quick. Let me just put some thought, plant a seed in the sister's mind this day. Watch this. Give me Matthew chapter 5 and verse, verse 14. Matthew 5 verse 14. Watch this. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. Read. Ye are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. The light is the laws of God. You understand? The laws of God must be seen through us. Go ahead. Ye are the light of the world. Mm -hmm. A city that is a set what? on a hill. A city. A what? A city. A city. A city. A city. Okay. A city that is what? A city. That is set on a hill cannot be hid. So a city, what do you have? What do you find in a city? When you go to a city, what do you find? Businesses, you find banks, you find restaurants, you understand? You find clothing shops, you find um property, okay? You find in uh, warehouses and so forth. I mean, in a city, you you when you go to the city. You are going there to get the things that you need, whether it be your hair, to, to do your hair, you understand, to get a massage, okay, to get oils for your skin and things of that nature. You see that thing? All of that to deck yourself. You go to the city to get those things. So the law says we are a city. So a city comprises of all those things. You buy food when you go to the, you go to, you go to the supermarkets, you go to your shop right and pick and pay. So we need to think, we need to start thinking about those things for us as a people. We're a city. So as a city, guess what we must have? We must have those things. When you want to get your hair done, you understand? Guess where? You, you know, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to, um, I'm, I'm, you're going to go to your sister's uh, salon. They only deal with Afro woolly hair. Uh, okay. The long stringy hair will be our brothers and sisters, the Puerto Ricans, the Mexicans. You understand? The quote, unquote, the quote unquote colors here in South Africa, because many of them, they are of Bantu descent, okay? They don't have hair of wool like us, like that. You understand? But there are Israel, a lot of them. My point is, you want to get your hair done, guess what? You go to your, you, you don't go to Sobe. What do they call these Edomite shops, these Edomite saloons and all? You don't go there. That's what you'll find in a city, okay? Things of that nature. That's how you need to think, you sisters. I need you sisters to, to think like this. Okay? Watch this. Um, go back to Acts chapter 9, verse 36. Acts chapter 9, verse 36. 
Read. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, Read. which by interpretation is called Dorcas. Mm -hmm. This woman was full of good works and mm -hmm. alms deeds, which you she see did. that thing? She was full of good works and alms deed, which she did. So arms is not just talking about just giving money. No, the deeds. That's those are arms as well. That's why here is not saying arms. He's saying arms deeds. Okay, go ahead. Watch this. Verse 37. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick mm -hmm. and died. We'll stop right there. She was what? She was sick and died. Stop right there. I want to show you something. Give me the book of Toby 12. Toby chapter 12 real quick. Watch this. Toby chapter 12. We're going to start at verse 8. Toby 12 verse 8. Watch this. Toby chapter 12 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Prayer is good with fasting and alms and righteousness. Read. A little with righteousness is better than much with unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. It is better to give alms than to lay up gold. Now watch this. There's going into uh, it goes into arms, but the part we want to deal with is uh, arms and righteousness. Arms, arms. It is better to give arms than to lay up gold. Meaning what? It's better to give than you store that money for your own lustful stuff, for your for the lust of your flesh, instead of give it to your nation, help your nation with whatever that you stored up. Go ahead. Verse nine. For arms doth deliver from death. For arms does what? For alms that deliver from death. For arms that deliver from death. So what you are reading here says, for arms that deliver from death, go ahead. And shall purge away all sin. And shall purge away all sins. Read on. Those that exercise arms and righteousness shall be filled with life. So it says those that exercise. See, this is a verb right here. It's a doing. It's a, it's a, it's, it's what? It's a verb, right? Yes, sir. Okay, uh -huh. it's an action word. So it says, those that exercise arms, meaning what? Their actions and righteousness shall be filled with life. Watch this. Go back to where it was at now. Acts chapter 9, verse 37. Acts chapter 9, verse 37. Come on. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Whom when they were, whom when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. So now our foremother, Tabitha, now she has passed on. It says she was sick and she died. So they washed her uh, and embalmed her because that's how with the customs of Israel to make sure that the body is what is clean, it smells good, and all that. And they put her in the upper chamber. Watch this. Go ahead. And for as much as Lida was nigh to Joppa. And the disciples. Lida was closer to Joppa. Go ahead. And the disciples had heard that Peter was there. Mm -hmm. They sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. So now Peter was in Lida. So Lida was closer to Joppa. And our foremother, Dorcas or Tabitha, was in Joppa. Go ahead. Verse 39. Then Peter arose and went and went with him. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber. Where Dorcas was. Go ahead. And all the widows stood by him weeping. And all the widows stood by him weeping. And showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. You see that thing? You see what they did? They put all they they had to put the stuff that our foremother did. He says, look at the stuff, see, look at the works she put in. You see that thing? Because at the apostle Peter understood, these bring glory unto men. These make garments for men. You see that thing? It says, and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them, while she was still alive. So when, they, when the apostle Peter arrived, they didn't see, look how good this, look, listen, this sister could quote scriptures good. No. They said, this sister, she put in work. This sister put in work. And they showed the, the Apostle Peter the, the stuff that she done. They showed the Apostle Peter the works that she put in. 
That's what I tell you, sisters. Learn how to sew. Learn how to cook. Learn how to bake. Learn how to run the kitchen. That's an honorable work. You must be proud to do that thing. Next, next part of the verse. Go ahead. Verse 40. But mm -hmm. Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed. And did what? And kneeled down and prayed. So the apostle Peter, when, she saw, when he saw all the stuff that the sister showed unto him, he kneeled down and prayed. Because there's power in prayer. Go ahead. And turning him to the body said, mm -hmm. Tabitha, arise. You see that thing? She turned, he turned to the body and said, Tabitha, arise. Meaning, wake up. Go ahead. And she opened her eyes. Mm -hmm. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. She sat up straight. Go ahead. Come on. Watch this. And he gave her his hand mm -hmm. and lifted her up. Come on. When she, and when he had called the saints and widows, presented her alive. You see what he did? He presented the sister alive. Go back to Toby chapter 12, verse 9 now. Watch this. That's some heavy stuff right here. The work that she put in, guess what her job was? She was, she knew how to sew. She made garments. And the work that she put in, guess what? Because remember, she was dressing Israel. Because we must dress according to the laws of the Most High God regarding dress code, both the men and the women. So that brings glory unto the Most High. So when we do that, we bring in honor and glory to the Most High God. Guess what? Our nation will be glorified in the Lord. So that's how you need to think. Okay? Read that. Toby 12 verse 9. Watch this. Toby chapter 12 verse 9. Mm -hmm. For arms doth deliver from death and shall purge away all sin. You see that Those thing? It says arms that deliver from death. Arms deliver from death and purge away all sins. She was delivered from death. Our foremother Tabitha had died. When the apostle Peter saw the work that she put in, guess what, she, guess what he did? He prayed and woke and brought his sister back to life. Because what? Because of her arms deeds. The work that she put in delivered her from death. So you sister, you really need to think about this stuff. That's why when I talk to you sisters, I'm hearing excuses, you turn my stomach. I'm like, what the hell is this? Sisters don't see what's going on here. We've got work to do. When I hear excuses, I don't even want to hear you. Okay, read that again, verse 9. Toby, chapter 12, verse 9. Read. For arms doth deliver from death. Come on. Purge away all sin. Mm -hmm. Those that exercise arms and righteousness shall be filled with life. Shall be filled with life. That's why she was able, what she received life. You understand? She received life. The most have blessed her this day. Watch this. Now, we're going to move to the next characteristics. The next characteristics of, of, of a high-value sister. A high-value sister, that her mindset, we just dealt with the mindset. You understand? Meaning what? She's what? She's got skills. She's industrious, the sister. The second part is that she takes initiative. You understand? The mindset of a high-value sister, she takes initiative. She don't sit there. She don't sit down, you understand, with her hands hanging. She don't want to do nothing. She's lazy. No. This sister right here, she takes initiative. In order for you to take initiative, that means you have identified a need. And when you want, because you have identified the need, you just discovered, you know, I've got skills. I've identified the need and I've got skills. I've got skills. There's a need right there. Let me go and feel, fulfill that need. Let me do the work. She will take initiative. Watch this. Go back to Toby 2, verse 11. Toby chapter 2, verse 11. Read. And my wife Anna did take women's works to do. Mm -hmm. My wife Anna, she took women's works to do. She took initiative. You say, you know what? I'm going to help my husband. I'm going to help my husband and I'm going to help my nation. That was her mindset. She took initiative. She, didn't wait for, she did not wait for Toby to say, hey, Pella, you, you see where we at? You see how things are? Can you go look for a job? Can you help me? You see, I cannot see I'm blind now. No, she didn't, she didn't wait to be told. She identified a need, and guess what? She decided, you know what? Let me fulfill this need. 
That's what she done. So guess what? You know, things must be done decently in order, obviously. So you've got an idea, you are seeing, you are identifying a need, come to leadership and say, I'm seeing such and such, okay? And then we look at it and say, okay, okay. But also we can say, okay, the, the, uh, uh, us to agree, we need to be able to understand, to see um, what, what, that, what reputation that the sister have. Is she lazy? Is she about the father's business? Oh, she's just playing games. Because that's another thing we need to assess. We need to assess stuff like that. Okay? But watch this. Read verse 11 again. 2 chapter 2 verse 11. Come on. And my wife, Anna, did take women's works to do. Watch this. Next verse now. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. And when she had sent them home to the owners, they paid her wages and gave her also besides a kid. You see what she did when, after she did the work, it says, and when she had sent them home to the owners, they paid her wages and gave her also besides a kid. Meaning what? A baby goat. So she was paid wages and she was given a kid over and above that. Watch this. Go ahead. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. And when it is, and when it was in my house and the, began. Remember. Remember, this is Tobit speaking. Tobit is, is, is giving you what went down. He's telling you what, what went down here. Okay, come on. And when it was in my house uh -huh. and began to cry. And not the kid. The kid began to cry. I mean, in the goat. Okay, the goat was making noise. Go ahead. I said unto her, mm -hmm. when is this kid? Where, did you, where, is this, where does this goat come from? That's the question she, he's asking. Go ahead. Is it not stolen? You see what she, you see what he's asking? Is it not stolen? Because in him, in his mind, my wife doesn't work. So where did she get this stuff from? Because she took initiative. Because had she told Tobit, Tobit was not going to be surprised by this. You sisters see that? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, what the hell is this? Where's the older sisters? What's yes, wrong with sir. you sisters? You sisters get that? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay, good, good, good. The hell is this? Read that again. Verse 13. Tobit chapter 2, verse 13. Read. And when it was in my house and began mm -hmm. to cry, I said unto her, mm -hmm. from rent is this kid. Is Read. it not stolen? Is it not stolen? Go ahead. Render it to the owners. He says, take it back. <laughs> Take it back. Now you see what you see what you see what just went down, right? He just accused his wife of being a thief. That's what just happened here. He accused his wife of being a thief. Go ahead. For it is not lawful to eat anything that is stolen. <laughs> now he's accusing. Listen, this thing is was stolen. Take it back to the owners. It's not lawful to eat anything that is stolen. Go ahead. Watch this. But she. But she replied upon me. Stop right there. It was, Hold on. She did what? But she replied upon me. You see, you see that part when it says, it says, but she replied upon me. Meaning she was mad. <laughs> That's why it says she replied upon me. She was mad. She wasn't happy about this thing, what Tobit was saying. Because it was a surprise to Tobit because she did not tell Tobit what she was going to do. But this sister, she took initiative to help her household. Okay, come on. But she replied upon me, it was given for a gift more than the wages. So it says, oh, yes, I, I got paid for the work that I'm doing. And over and above that, I was given a kid. Go ahead. How be it? I did not believe her. You see, he didn't believe it. He didn't believe her, his wife, what the wife was saying. Come on. But bade her Render it to the owners. You see what he did? He says, bait her, render it to the owners. Meaning, take it back. Go ahead. But bait her, render it to the owners. And I, and I was abashed at her. You see, meaning what? They were having an argument. Go ahead. But she replied upon me. She replied upon me. Meaning what? She wasn't, she wasn't happy about what Tobit was saying. Go ahead. 
Where are thine arms and thy righteous deeds? You hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Read that part again. But she replied upon me, Where are thine arms and thy righteous deeds? He says, Where are thy arms? Where are thine arms and thy righteous deeds? Now, now she is asking Tobit, watch this. Behold, thou and all thy works are known. He says, the reason why I was able to get the stuff I'm getting, the job I've got, the kid that I'm given, is because of the works that you had put in while you were still able to take care of us. That's what she's saying right there. Go back to Sirach 25 and 1. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 25 is 1. Come on. In three things I was beautified and stood uh -huh. up beautiful both before God and men. Come on. The unity of brethren, mm -hmm. the love of neighbors, a man and a wife that agree together. You see what he's saying? So what 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 um when he says a man and a wife that agree together, because what was um, our foremother doing? Our foremother, she was what she was putting a brick in because guess what? At this point, to Tobit could no longer provide the way that he could they, they, the way that he used to. So she saw that she's no, no, what? My husband has been holding things down from the, men, the minute I've known this man until this time where he is. Now it's time for me to help him. You understand? Watch the next part. Read chapter three, verse one. So we chapter three, verse one. Then I being grieved did weep and in my sorrow prayed saying, Oh, Lord. Hold on, wait. Read verse 1 again. Tobit chapter 3 verse 1. Come on. Then I, being grieved, did weep. Meaning he was and grieved by this thing. Meaning what? It, it, it touched Tobit deep. You understand? It touched him. You're like, what? My wife did what? Okay, come on. And in my sorrow prayed, saying. In my sorrow, because this thing really, it hurt him. He was like, wow. He, 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 it was that it was a surplus. That's why he was saying, take it back to the owners, right? it back to the owners because in his mind, he thought she must have stolen this thing. Okay, come on. Saying, Oh Lord, thou art just. You see what he's saying? He's praying to the most high God now because of what? Guess what? Go to Proverbs 31 now. Watch this Proverbs chapter 31. Hmm. Some heavy stuff right here. Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 10. There's some beautiful stuff right here. Brothers, pay close attention. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 10. Go ahead. Who can find a virtuous woman? Who can what? Who can find a virtuous woman? Toby, guess what? Toby found a virtuous woman. Toby found a virtuous woman. She took initiative. Go ahead. Who can find a virtuous woman? Uh -huh. For her price is far above rubies. This woman is priceless because that mind was well instructed. Go ahead. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her mm -hmm. so that he shall have no need of spoil. You see that thing? It says the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. You know, Toby didn't have those problems. Okay, go back to Toby 3, verse 2 again. So Toby give praises and honor to the Most High God. Toby chapter 3, verse 2. Toby chapter 3, verse 2. Come on. O Lord, thou art just, and all thy works and all thy ways are mercy and truth. Mm. And thou judgest truly and justly forever. You see that thing? Come on, read on. Remember me and look on me. Punish me not for my sins and ignorances. You see that thing? She is praying to the Lord because he what? What we just read the chapter before it, he was in his ignorance. You understand? He was in them. He was what? The sins goes into what? Because she accused, he accused his wife of being a thief. You understand? So Tobit is asking for mercy from the Most High God. Read. And the sins of my fathers who have sinned before thee. Now watch this. Go ahead. For they obeyed not thy commandments. Wherefore, thou hast delivered us for a spoil, 
and unto captivity and unto death and for a proverb of reproach to all the nations among whom we are dispersed. So now that's it on that. So what I wanted to show you is that Tobit, he did what? He, he examined himself about what just went down. This is the examples that we need to what? We need to follow. You understand? These are examples. Tobit recovered. He recovered quickly. So he, he, made, a, he made a boo-boo. And guess what? He prayed to the Lord for us forgiveness. And guess what? That's how we, that's how we, that's how we do it. Okay, watch this. Give me, give me the book of Proverbs 31 verse 16. Okay, Proverbs 31 verse 16. The book of Proverbs 31 verse 16. Read. Really? She considereth a field. And she does what? She considereth a field. He considereth a field. Because if you are considering, that means you sit down, you analyze the situation. You say, hmm, you know what? I'm seeing a need for X, Y, and Z. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what? I'm going to go out there and get myself land. And for you to do that, that means you've been planning. You sat down, you decided to count the cost. You say, you know what? I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. So let me prepare now so that in the future, I can be able to do it. But I must prepare now. And I must discipline myself and maintain that discipline until the need arises. So when the need came, guess what she did? She thought about that field and she went and bought it. Why? Because she prepared herself for that thing. That's, that, that, that's taking initiative. You don't need to be told over and over about the same thing. No, you take initiative. You understand? And when instruction comes, guess what you do? You execute it with grace. Read that again, verse 16. Proverbs 31, verse 16. Mm -hmm. She considereth the field really? and buy it. Mm -hmm. With the fruit of her hands, she planted a vineyard. She planted a vineyard, meaning what? She's going to work in that vineyard because she's planning, you know what? Whatever I'm going to plant in this vineyard, I'm going to use it to, for my business. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell. I'm going to sell cotton because I'm going to create what? Sewing material. That's what I'm going to do. That's the plan. Go ahead. Verse 17. She girdeth her loins with strength mm -hmm. and strengtheneth her arms. And strengthening her arms, meaning she's not lazy to work in this vineyard. Okay? Jump down to verse 26 now. Proverbs 31 verse 26. Mm -hmm. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. Really? And in her tongue is the law of kindness. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. Because in order for her to be a good businesswoman, guess what she's doing? She knows how to deal with people. Because if you are in business, you must know how to communicate. You must know how to deal with customers and all customer service because you are rendering a service. You want people to come back. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Ecclesiasticus, um, chapter 30. Let me see. Sirach 36. Uh, Sirach 36, verse 22. Ecclesiastes chapter 36, verse 22. Mm hmm the beauty of a woman cheereth the countenance. Mm -hmm. And a man loveth nothing, loveth nothing better. It says, uh, the beauty of a woman cheereth the countenance. Meaning what? It makes a man, it, you know, it makes a man happy. Okay. It says, and a man loveth nothing better. Go ahead. Verse 23. Watch this. If there be kindness. If, 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 that big if, if there be kindness. So what constitutes the beauty of this woman is what? Kindness. If they be kindness, go ahead. If they be kindness, mm -hmm. meekness. She's submissive. She's humble. Go ahead. And comfort. And comfort, where? In her tongue. In her tongue. In her tongue. So in Proverbs, it's just making, it's just what? It's only referencing what? Kindness, the law of kindness. But Serak is adding stuff. It says kindness, meekness, comfort, in you, you will find it in her tongue. This woman, she's what? This woman, she knows the type of business she's in. She knows her shoe size. You see that thing? Read that part again. Verse 23. Ecclesiastes 36, verse 23. Mm -hmm. If there be kindness, meekness, and comfort, in her tongue, 
Then is not her husband like other men. He says, then is not her husband like other men. The, the, the other women, I mean, the other men, they are not like this man. Because he's got himself a what? A virtuous woman. A high value sister. That is, her mindset is properly cooked. You understand? Watch this. Give me, go back to Proverbs 31, verse 26 again. Proverbs 31, verse 26. Proverbs 31, verse 26. Come on. He openeth her mouth in wisdom. Mm -hmm. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. In her tongue is the law of kindness. Go ahead. She looketh to well the ways of her household. No, no. No, no. Come on. Read that right. Verse 27 again. Proverbs 31, verse 27. She looketh well to the ways of her household. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And eateth not the bread of idleness. He says she looketh well to the ways of a household. Because this woman, give me Titus 2. Watch this. Give me the book of Titus. She looketh well to the ways of a household. When it comes to her house, she, listen, the house is always speak and span. Everything is in order. You understand? The children also, they follow the same pattern. Watch this. Titus chapter 2. And verse 5. Titus 2 verse 5. Watch this. Titus chapter 2 verse 5. Read. To be discreet. To be what? Please. To be discreet. To be discreet. Meaning she's got discretion. Come on. To be discreet. Chaste. Keep us at home. So it says to be discreet. Meaning she's got what? Discretion. Chaste. Meaning she's disciplined. Go ahead and keep us at home. Keep her, meaning what? She knows how to make sure that the house is in proper, good condition. The house is in order all the time. You understand? When she wakes up, she's, she's, she, she, when she deals with the house, it's as if Christ is going to walk in at any time. That's the mindset. That's the mindset she got because her Lord represents Christ in the house. You see that thing? But if you don't do that, because you don't see Christ in your Lord. That's the point. You ever see uh, people coming from outside, a sister that you we congregate with and all that, she's coming to visit, you make sure that the house is in order. That, that sister right there, that's not a wife. She don't reverence you. She must also, she must have the same mindset every single day in the house. Why? Because you, you represent Christ in the house. When she looks at you, she see Christ in you. So every day she's going to make sure that because what? Because this man, I see Christ in this man. And she's going to make sure that the house is always in order. You see that thing? She knows she's going to look well to her household. That's, what, that's how you sisters must think. You understand? That's why when you come to class, you'll be looking like ragamuffins because you don't see us as, you don't see Christ in us. You don't see Christ in these men of God. You don't see Christ in them. You see that thing? But if you did, guess what you will do? You will make sure that you don't look like a ragamuffin. Your head wrap is not going to be crooked to the side. It's not going to be looking, looking like that. You understand? Why? Because you are, you are in the spirit. Your mind is well instructed. It's not one ear out the other. Okay? The, the word of God actually, they sink in your spirit and you apply them. Read that part again. Titus chapter 2, verse 5. Come on. To be discreet, chaste, mm -hmm. keep us at home. Read. Good, obedient to their own husbands, mm -hmm. that the word of God be not blasphemed. So part of that obedience to their husband, you must what? You must be a keeper at home. You must have discretion. Because you, your discretion will fatten his bones. Okay? You must have discretion because your discretion will fatten his bones. You must be chaste. You must be disciplined in what is written in this book to what? To make sure that you honor and reverence this man. Keep us at home. That's how you what? That's part of the reason. That's part of the list of things to do what? To make sure that you, you are obedient to your husband. You are, you are discreet. You are chaste. Keep her at home. That's how you, 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 you submit yourself to your husband. That the word of God be not blasphemed. So if you don't want the word of God to be blasphemed, you are going to what? You're going to have discretion. 
You're going to be disciplined. You're going to have what? You're going to, you're going to make sure that your house is in order. You're going to be obedient to your own husband. That's how you make sure that the word of God is not blasphemed. You see that? The, that's the mindset of a high value sister. Watch this. Give me Sarah 26, verse 16. Sarah 26, verse 16. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 16. Read. Right? As the sun when it ariseth in the high heaven, so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. You see where her beauty comes from? In the ordering of her house. Her beauty comes from in comes from the ordering of her house. How she how she guides the house, how she looks well to her household, how she takes care of the house. The house is always on point because she wakes up early. She makes sure that every, by the time her Lord wakes up, everything is ready. And guess what? The kids are already what? The kids are already dressed up and all of that. That's the mindset. That's what you must do. Those of you sisters don't have children, practice right now. Wake up early, okay? You must do that. Wake up early. Prepare yourself. Do all of those things. Okay, even if you're not going to work, wake up early. Develop yourself a pattern of good works. Maintain those good patterns. Okay, watch this. Go back to Proverbs now. Proverbs 31, verse 27 again. Proverbs 31, verse 27. She looketh, she looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread the bread of idleness. And does what? And eateth not the bread of idleness. So this sister is not lazy. This is not a lazy sister. If you if you have that spirit of taking initiative, you're not you're not lazy. If you have that sister that um, if you are that sister that wants to acquire skills because you, you know that your skill is gonna benefit your nation, there's no way you can have a lazy you can have a, you can have a lazy bone in your body. You can't. Because your mind is constantly what? Your mind is constantly on the, the laws of the Most High God. Your mind is constantly on the nation. How can I be a benefit and asset to my nation? That's what's constantly going to be on your mind. Watch this. Read on, verse 28. Verse 28. Uh -huh. Her children arise up. Her children, her what? Her children arise up. Her children, her children arise up. Her children, that means what? She woke up before everyone. Her children arise up. Go ahead. And call her blessed. And what? And they honor their mother. They apply that, that the law that says honor your mother and your father. They honor that thing. Okay? Her children arise up and call her blessed. They honor their mother. Go ahead. Her husband also. And he praised her. You see that thing, it says, her husband also, and he praises her. Meaning what? The husband also what? The husband gives credit where credit is due. That's the point. The husband will give credit where credit is due. So you know what? You're putting in work. All praise to the most high. So these are things that sisters must what? They, you must have in your mind. You must have these things. And you must meditate upon these things. Take heed to these things. Let them sink in your spirit. Meditate upon them day and night. Let them be a tablet upon your neck. That's how they must be. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of, um, you see that part when it says, her children arise up because this woman, not only does she have good works, not only um, does she honor her husband, not only does she take initiative to what? To make sure that she be able to fulfill the need where the need required it. No, her, her children also are in order. That's why the children are always are, are, are able to honor their mother. That's why honor your mother and your father. The children are, all, are able to do that. Why? Because you know what she does? Give me second Maccabees, chapter 7, verse 27. Watch this. Second Maccabees, chapter 7, verse 27. Read. But she bowing herself toward him, laughing, laughing the cruel tyrant to scorn. Come on. Spake in her country language on this manner. Hebrew. Oh, Go my ahead. son. Oh, my son. 
have mm-hmm. pity upon me that bear thee nine months in my womb uh-huh. and gave thee suck three years and nursed thee and brought thee up into this age and endured the troubles of education. And did what? And endured the troubles of education. And endured, and endured the troubles of education. She endured, meaning what? In order for you to endure, that means you're going through pain, meaning the pain of educating my children so that they know the ways of the Lord. That's why the children were always to, were, all, were able to praise her. Why? Because guess what? She taught the children the laws of God. She went through the pain of teaching the children how to be in order, how to talk to the adults, how to talk to those that are older than them. You have to go through pain to get stuff like that done. It's not easy. Okay? It's not easy. It will test you, your patience and all of that. You understand? And sisters have more patience than us. I don't have that type of patience. Okay? That's why the, the, the mothers, they are the ones that will deal with the children up to a certain age at the command of the husband, the head of the house. And when they get to a certain age, that's when the father deals with them. You understand? Watch this. Give me, give me the book, give me the book of Joshua, okay? Because, no, no, go back to Proverbs 31, verse 28. Read Proverbs 31, verse 28 again. Proverbs 31, verse 28. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Mm -hmm. Her husband also, and he praises her. Watch this. Jump back up to verse 16. I just want to touch 16. on something. Verse 16. Come on. She considered no, the no, field. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Verse 16. I'm sorry. Verse 16. Read that. Proverbs 31, verse 16. Mm-hmm. She considered the field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands, she planted a vineyard. So now watch this. She considered a field. Remember, this woman, she takes initiative. She sees the problem. She sees a need to say, you know what? I need to fulfill that need. What do I need? I need skills. I need skills to fulfill that need. I need to know how to deal with money. I need to know how to budget. I need to not be a, uh, a waster. I must not be bleeding money. I must dis- get rid of the spirit of covetousness. You understand? Um, things of that nature. You know what? She's calculating. She's considering all these things. In order for me to get this to this place, I must get rid of X, Y, and Z in my spirit so I can be able to attain that thing. Watch this. Give me the book of Joshua, chapter 15, verse 16. Now, this is um, Caleb. Okay, Caleb had a daughter. And this is what Caleb said. Joshua 15, let's start at verse 16. Joshua, chapter 15, verse 16. Come on. And Caleb said, he that smited. Okay, I need you to put some power in your reading. Come on, bro. Verse 16 again. Joshua chapter 15, verse 16. Read. Right. And Caleb said, he that smited, kijat sefer, and taketh it, to him I will give Aksas, Aksa, my daughter to wife. So now Caleb is saying, listen, if you smite Kijash Sefer, these are what? These are Hamites. He says, and take it, it to him will I give Aksa, my daughter, to wife. He says, the reward, I'm going to give you my daughter to wife. Go ahead. And Othen- Othniel, the son of Kenaz, the brother of Caleb, took it. Uh-huh. And he gave him Aksa, his daughter, to wife. Read. And it came to pass. As she came unto him, that she moved him to ask of her father a field. Read. To do and what? She liked to ask of her father a field. To ask of her father a field. So now she's asking of her father a field. If her father is Caleb. Aksa is asking of her father a field. Go ahead. To ask of her father a field. And she lighted off her ass, and Caleb said unto her, what wouldest thou? What do you want? What wouldest thou? What, do you, what, what, would, what would you like? Go ahead. Who answered, give me a blessing. You see that thing? You see, the mindset was that, you know what? I need a field. I need land. 
she considered she he says she considered a field and buyeth it that's what we read in proverbs 31 verse 16 so our foremother aksa aksa because there was a sister back in the day when we were still children her name was aksa okay so aksa she's considering a field you know what i need to buy land okay let me go talk to my father about this thing that's the mindset she's taking initiative because why guess what remember she's married now to othniel now she's thinking you know what i need to bring some inheritance to this marriage you understand i need to bring some inheritance to this marriage now she's thinking you know what that's proverbs 31 right there read that part again joshua chapter 15 verse 19 uh -huh. who answered give me a blessing for thou hast given me a soft land so that give was what me. for thou hast given me a south land. He says, thou has given me a south land. Meaning this sister right here, she was good with property. She was good with property. He says, thou has given me a south land. Watch this. Go ahead. Give me also springs of water. He says, give me springs of water. I need access to water. So I property goes with water. You understand? That's why today they build property. What do they do? They pull the water pipes to, those, to that property to be able to service the property. You understand? Suri system, you understand? The toilet system, the, the geyser, the, uh, the, the basin, and so on and so forth. Yes, that's what we're reading here, okay? It says, give me also springs of water. Go ahead. And he gave her the upper springs. Uh -huh. And the nether springs. She, so our, her, her father says he gave her the upper springs and the nether springs of water. So she had access to land and water, water resources. So she had water aquifers. She had reservoirs of water. That's some beautiful stuff right here. So now today, because when you look at this stuff, when you have this today, guess what you can do now with this? You have land, you have water. You can plow on the land, you can water also. Another thing is you can do what? You can build in a water purification, whatever, and be packaging water and selling it. Springs of water, selling spring water. You can do that. Where do you think Esau get this stuff from to sell spring water? They get it from here, what we are reading right here. Springs of water. It's not a new concept, okay? Our forefathers and former, they did these things, all right? This is just an example to show you this is the mindset of a, the high, a high value woman. A high value woman, these are the things she thinks about. Okay? Today, you might not necessarily have property, land, and all of that, but it can be a, some another asset that you can look into for the benefit of your nation and for the benefit of your household because you look at well to your household. Investments, things of that nature. These are things you must think of. Okay? Don't be a simpleton. Okay, watch this. Give me, give me the book of Numbers 36, verse 2. Numbers chapter 36 and verse 2. Numbers chapter 36, verse 2. Now, now these are the daughters of Zelophehad. You understand? Zelophehad only had daughters. Watch this. We what you got. Numbers chapter 36, verse 2. Mm -hmm. And they said, the Lord commanded my Lord to give the land for an inheritance by lot to the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And my Lord was commanded by the Lord to give the inheritance of Zelophehad, our brother, unto his daughters. You see that thing? So Zelophehad only had daughters. So now they are coming to talk to Moses about this thing. He said, listen, our father died. He only had daughters. So now what happens to the inheritance? Land. Go ahead. And if they be married to any of the sons of the other tribes of the children of Israel, then shall their inheritance be taken from the inheritance of our fathers mm -hmm. and shall be put to the inheritance of the tribe whereunto they are received. Meaning in the, in the, in the tribe where they are going to be married. If they, are, if they were Levi, they are married by Judah, guess what's going to happen? Judah will take the land. Go ahead. So shall it be taken from the lot of our inheritance. Mm -hmm. So now what they are saying is, listen, we need land. We need our land. Because now our father died. 
and we all, just the daughters. So what, what happens to the land, the inheritance that our father has left us? What's going to happen to this land? Because they must work the land because they have the same mindset as AXA. AXA had the same mindset. They have the same mindset as well. Okay, so they want, they're going to work the land because the land, that's what, that's your inheritance. You plow, you plant, you reap, you harvest and so forth. That's what, that's what this is going into. You understand? Property. So it does not necessarily have to be property, but these are examples I'm showing you, sisters. These are things that you must know. You must, you must have a skill. That's the key. You must have a skill. You must take initiative to develop your skills. If you don't got skills, take initiative. We give you counsel, sis, learn how to cook. Sis, learn how to sew. Sis, learn how to bake. Sis, so on and so. These are skills that you're going to have. These are, these are assets. Okay? Because if you're learning how to, to bake, baking is an art. You need to know how to count. You must know, okay, I must buy flour like this. This is the amount of bread I'm going to produce or muffins, whatever have you. You, you, need, you must know how to budget. It's like a business. You know that in a month, this is, this is the flour must, this is the amount of flour I must buy. This is how many breads is going to produce in a month. This is how much I'm going to save per month for my household. So on and so forth. This is how you must, this is the things you must think about, you sisters. Okay, watch this. Uh, from there. Um, the third and last characteristic of the mindset of a high value sister is what? That sister is not lazy. Okay? She's not a lazy bum. She's not a bum. Okay? She's not lazy. She's not a ragamuffin. Watch this. Give me the book of Sirach 22, verse 1. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 22. Let's read verse 1. Sirach 22, verse 1. Watch this. We all know the Bible is written in a masculine form. So we're dealing with the sisters on this wise. Go ahead. Sirach 22, verse 1. Ecclesiastes 22, verse 1. Come on. A slothful man is compared to a filthy stone. A filthy in stone him. is going in. Hold on. It says a slothful man or woman is compared to a filthy stone. A filthy stone is, is a metaphor for poop, a pile of doo-doo. Go ahead. And everyone will hiss him out to his disgrace. You see that thing? And everyone will hiss him out to his disgrace, meaning it's a disgrace to be slothful, to be lazy. Go ahead. Verse 2. A slothful man is compared to the filth of a dunghill. You see that thing? Now he's getting, he's making it plain. A slothful man or woman is compared to the filth of a dunghill. The dunghill is a heap of doo-doo. Okay? Read that part again. Ecclesiastes chapter 22, verse 2. Read. A slothful man is compared to the filth of a dunghill. Uh -huh. Every man that takes it up will shake his hand. You see that thing? And every man that takes it up will shake his, will, will shake his hand. So now you, must, you, 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 you really need to think about it and say, okay. So a slothful man is compared to a filth of a dunghill. So can you be walking around uh, with, with, a, with, with a bag of doo-doo? Just really think about it. So when you are slothful, that's how people are going to think of you, like you walking around with a pile of doo, doo in your bag. Everybody be smelling that thing. So sisters, you can't be uh, 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 the, the mindset of a, of, of a high value sister can't think like that. No. The mindset of a high value sister don't think like that at all. You understand? It's not just about the looks. And I'm going to deal with that part in a second. Watch this. Give me Sirach 36, 24. Because if the sister is slothful, remember this sister, she's industrious. This sister takes initiative. She's got skills. She takes initiative. You understand? She's proactive. She's not lazy. Okay? Because if she is lazy, this is the problem. Watch this. Give me that in Sarah 36, 24. This is what you're going to do to your Lord. Sarah 36, 24. Ecclesiastes chapter 36, verse 24. Come on. He that getteth a wife beginneth a position, uh -huh. a help like unto himself, and a pillar of rest. You see that thing? It says, he that getteth a wife beginneth a position. Come on. Yes, don't slow me down now. 
the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 36, verse 24. He that gets it away, begin at the possession. Mm -hmm. A hell that come to himself and a pillar of rest. So he says, he that getteth a wife, getteth, beginneth a possession. Because something that is a possession is an asset. It appreciates over time. You see that thing? It appreciates over time. So an asset will appreciate a help like unto himself, because your job is to come and help me. Okay? And a pillar of rest. Not a pillar of stress, a pillar of salt. She's bitter. No. A pillar of rest because guess what this sister she's not lazy you understand she's not lazy so as you are building she's gonna what she's going to support you she's gonna be there with you and for you to help you to solve your problems that you got that's why she's able to take initiative you see our former mother Anna she was able to she took initiative she was not she was not slothful she was able to help Tobit you see that thing so likewise, you can be lazy. In order for you to have that mindset, laziness is not part of it. You understand? She's not lazy. She's a pillar of rest. When you build, she's not going to plug down. Because the only way she's going to be able to plug down when you build is the slothful spirit that she got. You understand? As you build, she will plug it down. You build, she'll plug it down. Before you know it, she will abate the courage. She will discourage you because here you are, you're putting bricks. She's taking bricks down. You cannot build like that. You don't agree together. You see that thing? Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Ecclesiastes 10 verse 18. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 18. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 18. Read what you got. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 18. By much slothfulness, the building decayeth. Mm -hmm. And through idleness of hands, the house dropped through. You see that in that house that the, 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 the husband is building, she's going to destroy it because she's slothful. Because a slothful person, she, the, the mindset is not build, build, build. The mindset is like, how can I destroy and by what degree can I get away with it? That's the mindset. You see, that's the mind of the Negro. So what we are reading here is, is by much slothfulness, the building decayeth. Give me Proverbs 14, verse 1. We're coming back here. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. Watch this. The book of Proverbs chapter 14, verses 1. Read. Every wise woman builded the house. She does what? Every wise woman build the house. In order for you to build your house, you, laziness cannot be part of it. She's not lazy. This woman, she's a builder. She builds. She's, a, she's that pillar of rest. You understand? Read that part again. Every, every wise woman build the house. So the mindset of a high value sister, she's wise and she uses that wisdom to build her house. That's the wise sister right there. That's the, the sister with the mindset. That's the, mind, that's the mindset of a sister. That's the type of sister you're looking for. That has the mindset to build. She's got the mind to build. She's got the mind to be an asset. Not a liability. Not a pillar of stress. Mm -mm. Read that again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 1. Every Read. wise woman builds the house. Come on. But the, flu, but the foolish... Plucketh it down with the hands. But the foolish one, the lazy one, the bum, will pluck it down with her hands. She's a bum. She's not going to help you with nothing. She's going to be a pillar of stress to you. You understand? You're going to age quickly because of this demon. So your job, that's why you must prove a sister. Prove the sister. Make sure that her mind is right. And these are the characteristics you need to look for. And you sisters, these are the characteristics you must what? You must attain to what? You must attain for. You must attain to, to have these characteristics. You must make sure that your mind is what? Is configured according to the laws of God. Your mindset must change. You must subdue your own understanding and what? And reform your heart. Change your thinking. This is how you put on the what? That's how you put on Christ right here. That's how you put on that armor of light. So that the Lord can bring back our foremothers of old. Okay? Watch this. Give me, go back to Ecclesiastes 10, verse 18. 
the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 18. By much slothfulness, the building decayed. Uh -huh. And through idleness of the hands, the house dropped through. You see that thing? Because guess who, which, which, which woman does this? That's that foolish woman. That's that slothful sister. She's the one that's going to destroy it. Because you'll be building, she'll be destroyed. But the wise one, she's got the wisdom to build her house. Because she understands her role. She will help you build it. She's not going to be counterproductive. She's not counter-revolutionary. Mm -mm. This, right, this woman right here, she's got a mind of a revolutionary woman. She's revolutionary. You understand? That's the mindset. That's the mindset you sisters must have. That's the mindset you must attain. Watch this. Give me Proverbs 31. You know what? Before you get married, watch this. She's not lazy, right? She's not slothful. This is the mindset that she will have. Give me Proverbs chapter 6 now. Proverbs 6 verse 6. Watch this. The book of Proverbs chapter 6 verse 6. Read. Go to the end, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. You see that thing? Go to the end, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. So this wise sister right here, she's got the mindset of what? She's got the mindset to learn. She's going to go to the end and understand how the end that how the end does things because if you want to see how progress gets done just watch the ends if you want to see how progress gets done just watch the ends they work well together they can build a bridge to get to the other side you understand because they that's that's not the spirit of slothfulness ends are not lazy you ever seen ends they are always busy all the time they're busy with something and it's not in vain they are busy they are always in preparation because when, when it's winter, you're not going to see them running around. They have food for the whole winter. What is that called? Wisdom. That's called wisdom. The Lord has, when, we looked, when he looked at the mindset of the Israelites, he said, you know what? Their, 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 their mindset is below the ground, at the bottom. They, let me revive them by teaching them. Let's go to the end and learn something. Read that again, verse 6. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 6. Go mm -hmm. to the end, thou sluggard. Come on. Consider her ways and be wise. Consider her ways and be wise. Learn some wisdom. Watch this. Next verse. Which have no guide, overseer, or ruler. You see that part? Meaning what? The end has the mindset she, the end takes initiative. That's what this is going into. Which have no guide, overseer, uh, overseer or ruler. They take initiative. You understand? That's the because when you have that mindset to take initiative, you're not lazy. There's a wise sister right here. She's not lazy. You understand? She's not lazy. Read on. Provided her meat in the summer. You know, she does what? Provided her meat in the summer. You see that thing? That means she's laboring. She's laboring. She is laboring for her household. Every waking moment is what is for the what to for her to benefit her nation, for her to benefit her household, to benefit her Lord and the most high God ultimately. Okay, above all. Watch this. Read that again. Verse 8. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 8. Provided, eight. provided her meat in the summer uh -huh. and gathered her food in the harvest. You see that thing? It says, provided her meat in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. Meaning what? The ends need, they, they what? They have, um, they have goals. They have long-term goals. You understand? They are able to sit down and plan things out. You say, you know what? In such and such, in two years, in a year, in six months, they have short-term and long-term goals. Because that's what this is going into. It says, provided her meat in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. Goal city, she sets goals. And those goals, she says deadlines to those goals. The end, when, when, when I mean, when, what is the deadline on this? Um, I have a week to do this. I have two months to do this. I have three weeks to get this thing done. There's a deadline attached to this thing. She's not going to sit there and just be saying, no, I'm doing such and such, but there's no deadline. We don't know when it's going to be finished because that's a loophole for what? For laziness and excuses. Okay, read that again, verse eight. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 8. 
provided to meet in the summer and gather the food in the harvest. Read. How long will thou sleep, O sluggard? Mm -hmm. When will thou arise out of thy sleep? When will thou arise out of thy sleep? Go ahead, because this woman, she rise up early. She rise up early and give it me to her household. She's not lazy. You understand? Come on. Yet a little sleep, a little slump, a little folding of hands to sleep. You see that thing? A little folding of the hands to sleep. Folding meaning what? You are idle. This woman is not idle. She's never idle. She's always busy like an ant. Read. So shall thy poverty come as one the tra traveler. And thy want as an armed man. Thy leg, meaning your leg is going to come as an armed man, like a thief. You see what he's saying right there? So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth. Because the reason why she's laboring, she, she understands that I don't want to find myself impoverished. That's the mindset. I don't want my children impoverished. I don't want to be, I don't want to find myself where my husband can no longer provide. My husband can no longer be able to provide for us as he used to, like we see in Tobit. Then I'm just going to sit there, just be folding my arms. I have no skills. You understand? I am lazy. Okay. I don't have the mindset to take initiative to start a business. To, you understand? Something so you can help your family. That's the foolish woman. She don't think like that. But this, this sister right here that we're talking about, she thinks about those things. She understands cause and effect. Because sisters don't understand cause and effect. That's why the, the kryptonite to black women is accountability. That's the kryptonite for black women. Accountability. You understand? They don't want to take accountability. This sister right here, she's not lazy, even in her thought process. Her thought process is not lazy. That's some heavy stuff right there. Watch this. Proverbs 31, verse 15. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verses 15. Come on. She riseth also while it is yet night. Mm -hmm. And giveth me to her household and a portion to her maidens. You see that thing? She riseth also while it is yet night. So it takes... It, it does not, it, you, you cannot be lazy and do this. Never. And it takes discipline, chaste, that's what it says, chaste in Titus 2. Okay, in Titus 2 verse 5, I think that's what we was reading. In Titus 2 verse 5 it says, you must be what? Discreet, chaste, keep us at home. So you can't be, you can't be slothful and wake up early while it is yet night. Impossible. Okay, read that again. The book of Proverbs, 31 verse 15. She mm -hmm. riseth also while it is yet night and giveth me to a household and a portion really? maidens. Jump down to verse 18 now. Watch this. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Read. Really? Her candle goeth not out by night. You see that she wakes up early, she sleeps late. That's the, that's the, this is the sister right here. This sister's mindset is like clockwork. See, she's like a machine. And to get to that automation, to, to get to that automation, what's the word? To get to that automotive, automotive mindset, guess what she must do? She must what? She must create, she must create a timetable, a schedule on when and how she does things and how long those things are going to take when she does them. She knows where her time goes, what's eating her time. She knows. She's always time sensitive. She's time sensitive. Okay. You know what? Um, instead of saying not lazy, say time sensitive. She's time sensitive. No, time conscious. She's time conscious. So just scratch not lazy. Put time conscious. She's time conscious. Let's go with that. Okay. She's time conscious. Because when you are time conscious, these are things you think about. And there's things that you know that will cost you the, the things that you want to achieve. So you're going to avoid those things. And there's things that you know, if I do these things, guess what? I, will, I shall never fail. If I do, I do these things right here, 
I'm not going to fail. That's the mindset. So she's sure she's time conscious. She knows that time is money. Okay. Time is, uh, the time is at hand. She understands that. Okay. Read that again. Proverbs 31 verse 18. The book of Proverbs 31 verse 18. She perceives that a merchant is good. Mm -hmm. A candle goeth not out by night. It says her candle goeth not out by night. Meaning this woman, she wakes up early, she sleeps late. Why? Because she's busy. She's got a, she's got a schedule she's working with. She's time conscious because she understands time equals productivity. Equals um, time equals productivity. It equals the fruits that are gonna come forth. I need to put in effort. I need to work hard. I need to put in. I, I need to put in the work so I can be able to get the fruit. These fruits are gonna be for the benefit of the nation of Israel, her household, and her children. That's the mindset. So this sister that is time conscious. Guess what? She does not associate with slothful spirits. Slothful spirits, they annoy the hell out of her. Because what? They are a waste of time. They are a waste of life. She, she doesn't got time for those type of people. You understand? She doesn't have time for them. Watch this. Jump down to verse 20. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 20. Come on. She stretched out her hand to the poor. Mm -hmm. Yea, she reached forth her hands to the needy. So now she stretched her hand. It says she stretched out her hand to the poor. In order for that to happen, guess what? She needs to understand the needs of the people. She understands the needs of her community. She understands the needs in the community. You know what? Hmm. We need to dress up our, our daughters with modest, with modest apparel. What is needed? We need skills. Okay? We need skills. That's one thing she's going to figure out. We need skills. You see what she's doing? She's taking initiative. We need skills. And guess what she does? They will learn the skills. If there's no skills, if there's skill shortages, she will make sure that she makes sure that the people that are going to be doing the work, helping her, or she knows that she needs to do the work to be that example, she's going to learn the skill. And she's going to learn the skill. She's going to apply what she learned. Why she apply what she learns, she's going to be that example. And others that come after her, they will follow her, the example that she set. That's like our foremother Tabitha. Same thing she did. She set the right example. You understand? She took initiative. She, she, she got her skills up. You understand? She was time conscious. Meaning everything she was doing, it was scheduled. You understand? It was planned out. It wasn't haphazard. Today I'm doing this. Mm, I don't know tomorrow what I'm going to be doing. Uh, let me think. Mm, maybe I should. No, no. The thought process wasn't cluttered. It was clear. She knew beginning and end and middle. She knew the consequences of not doing this or the other. She understands that. Read that again. Verse 20. The book of Proverbs 31 verse 20. Read. She stretches out her hand to the poor. Mm -hmm. She reaches forth her hands to the needy. You see that thing? She understands the needs. The women need to dress up in a certain way. They must wear garments, long garments. They must cover their head. The women must, their skin must look a certain way. Their skin must do up. They must have beautiful skin. What is the need? Diet must change. You see that thing? Exercise. Drink enough water. You understand? These are things that, these are the things that she will identify. You understand? There's a problem of body order in the nation of Israel, the women. Okay, these are things that needs to be done. Long dresses, they're going to fix the first problem. Discharges and all that is going to solve that problem. And guess what? Now to maintain that, you must get the special soaps, oils. You bath yourself, you, you know, you soak in water mixed with oil. And all. you read the book of Esther. It goes into that. You see our foremother, Judith, that she decked herself. These are things that you will identify as a sister and say, you know what? We have a problem with order in the black community. The sisters are struggling with X, X Y, and Z. Okay, we need, we're going to use the scriptures. We're going to gather the sisters together, say, you know, sisters, we like X, Y, and Z. What do we need to do? You, we need to learn that skill. You, you need to learn that skill. Because the objective is we have identified a problem. They are taking initiative. We have identified a problem. We're going to fix it. Now, we, we is Pentecost. 
since they, 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 they don't know how to bake and all, they are learning some of them, guess what? In the future, you put together a, a recipe book on how to cook, how to make unleavened bread, how to bake, how to make these salads and so forth and so forth. Guess what? You just, every sister must have it in their house. When it's time for the feast coming up, they know how, what to do and how to do these things. That's the mindset. That's what we're building here. Okay? Verse 31. Watch this. The book of Proverbs, 31, verse 31. Mm -hmm. Give her of the fruits of her hands. Read. That her own works praise her in the gates. You see that thing? This sister, she's got her own works that is praising her in the gate. Meaning what? Everybody knew that sister. The same way everyone knew our foremother, Tabitha. Yes, everyone knew that sister. She was putting in work. She did the work, the sister. She wasn't lazy. She was time conscious. She took initiative. You understand? She understood the needs. She was, she was skillful. She acquired skills. That's taking initiative. You identify the problem. Guess what you do? You go and acquire skills to deal with that problem. And guess what? You are time conscious. You understand this is not an open-ended. It's not forever. I must make sure that I do this in haste to benefit my nation. That's how progress gets done. Okay? Watch this. She's not a pretty face. Jump up to verse 30. Read verse 30. She's not just a pretty face. Let me put it like that. She's not just a pretty face. Verse 30. Watch this. The book of Proverbs, 31 verse 30. Favor is beautiful. And beauty is vain. And what? And beauty is vain. It says favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. Go ahead. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. You see that thing? But a woman that fears the most High God, she's going to be praised. She's going to be praised. Why? Because she's doing, she's doing the work. She's humble. She's sincere. The law of kindness is in her tongue. You understand? She has all those attributes. That mindset that she has, when she, she has these three pillars in her mind, guess what? That virtuous woman, that virtuous nature that has been hiding because of these evils that, that uh, the philosophies that men have set up to, diffuse, to, de to deceive and confuse our women, guess what? This is the defense that she's going to have now. She's going to put what? The helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God to fight against the evils because she understands we are at war. And her job is to do what? Is to sit there and identify the needs. You know, like, you know what? When I look at the way the children dress, our daughters, they're not dressing correctly. When you go to the shops, it's leggings, it's mini skirts. Listen, no, I'll need to solve this problem. We have a problem in the nation. That's how she must think. That's the mindset you must have, sisters. You understand? Have a clue. Okay, this is to help you to have a clue this day. Okay, I'm going to end the class right here. Give me the book of First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. Let's break bread. First book of Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same man, also he took the cup. And when he had supped, said, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, Whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.